Hey, look, I get it. I know a lot of people don't like those minions, but hey, you should thank those minions. Those minions did something that I didn't think was possible. They helped knock Transformers out of the top spot one week after it came out. It's dropping and it's all because of Baby Driver and those minions. So bless you, minions. Bless you. A banana, a banana, a banana. <laughs> Praise minions. Hi, I'm Andre. I'm a black nerd with a review for you better reviews. You have asked me to review Despicable Me 3, which I actually was going to review earlier, but then I got to see an early screening of Spider-Man Homecoming, and I was like, I'm sorry, minions, you got to wait. Spider-Man got to be first. <laughs> and then, of course, I had to have my therapy session with Lindsay about the Transformers, but now that's all over. I can talk about Despicable Me 3, which is kind of appropriate now anyway. It's the number one movie in America. Also, the 4th of July is coming up. You're going to be with your family. You're probably going to want to go to a theater so you can not talk to your family. I review movies a lot on this channel, so if you're into that sort of thing, make sure you are subscribed to this channel by clicking that subscribe button, and also ring that bell to be notified of future videos I make, be part of that squad by the bell. So Despicable Me 3 is another Despicable Me movie. You know exactly what you're getting into when you go to these things. You're gonna get Gru, you're gonna get the girls, you got Lucy coming back from Despicable Me 2 now that they're married. You also have the minions, of course, they're gonna show up again. The only character that doesn't come back is Dr. Nefario, which I guess they heard my calls. I have always said that Dr. Nefario was not a character I really liked too much because he was always one of the characters that helped the villain with their evil plan and then instantly turned around and was like, well, now I'm going to help you, Gru. It's like, well, if you didn't help them in the first place, there wouldn't be no problem. In this movie, they're like, nah, Dr. Nefario somehow gets frozen in carbonite and they go, hey, look at Dr. Nefario. He got frozen in carbonite. And now the rest of the movie. <laughs> and I was all like, bye, Nefario. <laughs> but in this movie, Gru is still part of the anti-villain league, and he's trying to go up against Balthazar Brat, which is a character I really like because it came with a lot of 80s references. So Balthazar Brat is a former child star. <laughs> he had his own TV show until he hit puberty, so no one thought he was cute anymore. And so this made him really upset. So eventually he becomes an evil villain, which kind of makes sense to me. Wouldn't it just make sense that someone who was really, really popular in the 80s would then grow up several years later and do something evil like try to take over the whole country holy shit so Balthazar Brat uses keytars as weapons he uses Rubik's cubes he's always dance fighting and he's playing 80s songs all the time I know it is super cheap to just throw those references out there to hit that nostalgia bone but it hit me I really enjoyed when he was on the screen and he's voiced by Trey Parker from South Park and if you've seen the trailers you know that Gru finds out that he has a brother Drew and Drew wants to get him back into the world of villainy and Drew is also voiced by Steve Carell his personality is a little bit different and his voice is slightly different I kind of wish that the character was voiced by someone else I mean I think Steve Carell is a great actor and he does a good job as both Gru and Drew but I think this would have just been a cool opportunity to bring in a another person into the Despicable Me franchise. Illumination does really good animation. It's a lot of action in this movie that looks really, really good. When Balasar Brat was popular in the 80s, they of course made a bunch of toys based on his character. And one of the toys that they show, which actually kind of plays into the third act of this movie a little bit, it looks like a real toy. It looks completely different from the rest of the movie. Like, it looks like they took a real toy and animated it into the movie. So I thought that was very impressive. The Minions also perform a song in this movie. It's that song, you know, I am the very model of a modern individual. But you know, that, that song from the HMS, I remember from Animaniacs. But they sing that song in their Minion speak, and that animation sequence is also very cool. They come out and different costumes, there's toilet paper being thrown around. Very, very lovely looking. Stay to the end of the credits for this movie because they do this really cool 2D animated sequence of Gru and Drew kind of fighting each other spy versus spy style. Just a position of the black and white with Gru and Drew and it's all 2D animated and it's really nice. So no matter how you feel about this movie, good or bad, there's at least some creative things in it. Yeah, man, the movie is fine. I think the biggest problem that I have with Despicable Me 3 is that it has a bunch of good plots but the problem is it has a bunch of plots. There are lots of plots in this movie because you got Gru meeting his brother Drew, Gru going up against Balthazar Brett. You also got Edith and Agnes looking for a unicorn and Lucy trying to be a good mother to the girls. Margo is just there. Miranda Crosgrove must have just came in for like an hour and did all her lines because she's hardly in the movie. Then you got Drew trying to convince Gru to become a villain again. And that I think alone is a very interesting plot because that's what Gru was all about to begin with was he was this evil villain, world renowned thief. Gru for a little bit having a relapse. That could have been a fun thing for them to go back to, but they really don't go back to it. Again, it's not one of these movies, it's kind of promoting it. That's the big thing about the movie, and it's not. 
Stop lying to us, movies and trailers and commercials. There's a lot of stuff that's happening in this movie that's all in one movie. And I think if they would have just chosen one or two of the plots and really expanded on them, they could have been really interesting stories. But the problem is because they have so many of them going on at one time, you don't really get to focus too much on one and everything becomes a missed opportunity. Balazar Brat stuff is really good, but because you don't see too much of it, they don't really play that to its full potential. Gru's brother Drew and their relationship doesn't play out to its full potential. I think it's just a little too bloated for an animated family film about Gru and his minion friends. You know, I think that they could have made this a little bit simpler and saved some stuff for Despicable Me 4 because we know Despicable Me 4 is going to happen. But you know what? Brings it back up again. You might not like them, <laughs> but I'm telling you, man, the thing that saves this movie are the minions. The minions are actually not in the movie that much, but when the minions are on screen, it's fun. So the minions revolt, they go away, and it leads to this whole adventure for them where they end up on a studio lot and they end up in a reality show called Sing. How appropriate that it was called Sing, which also ironically happens to be the name of the last movie that Illumination made with the singing animals. Oh, what a shocker. And the minions end up in prison. <laughs> and it leads for some really fun scenes if you think that prison is funny. Not gonna hurt you if you decide to go see this movie, although I gotta be honest, if you are planning on seeing an animated movie right now this summer, I would recommend seeing Captain Underpants. This movie 3 is not terrible, I just think that there's a lot of elements in it that could have been done better if it could have focused on any of those elements as opposed to trying to do so much at one time. But hey, Pharrell songs? You know you're gonna get Pharrell songs in them. Thumbs up. Gotta love that Pharrell soundtrack in these Despicable Me movies. They should just make a Despicable Me movie where it's just lyrics videos of Pharrell songs <laughs> with Gru and the Minions just dancing around while words splatter on the screen of Pharrell's lyrics. I would pay top money for that movie. And if you ever wanna see me talk more about Minions, Transformers, or other movie properties that have rides at Universal Studios, make sure you go over to the Regal Movies YouTube channel and check out my series, Catching Up With Andre, where I do episodes catching you up on the latest movies. So are you interested in Despicable Me 3? Or if you already seen it, let me know what you think about it in the comments. And if there's ever a suggestion for any movie you want me to talk about, both past and present, always feel free to leave a suggestion for it on my channel. Click the subscribe, ring that bell to be notified, and I'll See you on the other side. I live like a play cousin. I'm out of 5,000. Banana! Yelp.